always in our home, but also in theirs. I learned this from my eventual wife, Megan, who lived across the street from me. She told me that some strange guy was living in their house. After she described him, I deducted it was one. from dance. 
I jumped as a bang shook the night and then the voices faded. There's people going into the basement, I thought. Frightened. Our basement was unfinished, an expanse of empty cement. Why are they going into the basement, I thought. Silently assuming my parents were down there, I crept. Sure enough, sure enough, the basement door was opened and I saw a light reflecting off the dusty floor. Deep floor. I could hear my father's voice, then the familiar voices of our neighbors, our friends. They were speaking to someone. They were pissed, angry, furious. My heart froze in my chest as someone laughed from the depths of the cellar. <laughs> I knew that laugh. Making sure to not make a sound, I slunk to the open door and descended the first, the first two steps to look out at the scene below me. The scene below me showed Tommy bound to a metal chair in the middle of the room, surrounded by the six pairs of parents that lived in our neighborhood. Their backs were to me, but I could see Tommy's flawless face gazing up at them. Megan's father was there, his face a mess of bruises and swollen flesh. His arm was in a sling, and it looked like his shoulders slumped, like his back was in pain. I sucked in a breath, and as I realized, one of the men was passing my father a pistol. The woman stood by their husbands with grim looks on their faces. There is no disagreement among the executioners. It's time for you to leave our lives, Tommy, one of the men said. Looming over him, I recognized him as my friend Luke, Luke's father. They live two houses down. This is your last chance, he growled. Tommy didn't even struggle in his rope bindings. That ever-present smile still on his face. He looked up at them. The overhead light illuminated his sparkling blue eyes. I don't understand. I'm just trying to help all of you raise your children properly. I'm not going anywhere. An odd look passed between the parents and then my father put the gun to Tommy's head. You're not helping anyone, Tommy. You're a monster. You can't come into our homes and threaten our children, threaten our lives. That's not how this works. All those threats you whispered to us while we were Caught off guard. Well, look at you now. My father spat on him. Pathetic, and now you'll get yours. My father shot Tommy in the head. The report was deafening, and I almost screamed, slamming my hand over my mouth at the last second. Tommy's head whipped back as the smell of gun smoke spiked. The air was silent. For a moment, and then, <laughs> in horror, I watched as Tommy slowly raised his head to stare back up at my father. What the hell? One of the women breathed, her voice shaking. No blood, no shatter of bone, nothing. Just a dark circle in Tommy's forehead where the bullet advanced. 
setting and the dying orange light filtered in through the living room window, stretching out across the floor to cover the dinner table. My mother and father sat at opposite ends of the table, chatting about their days. I could tell they were still shaken, but I admired the way they were trying to return their lives to what it had been before. Tommy Daffy showed up. I shoveled mashed potatoes into my mouth. The front door exploded open. I spun around, jumped as the wood splintered and the hinges creaked. I dropped my, my fork, my eyes growing wide. Holy shit, it was Tommy and he was furious. My parents' mouths dropped in unison, but before they could speak, Tommy marched towards us with alarming speed and upended the kitchen table. Dishes filled with food shattered to the floor, and my father half rose, fear paralyzing him. What a word! Tommy grabbed my father by the neck and dragged him to the wall, where he plowed his face through the sheetrock. My mother screamed, and I ran to aid my father, but Tommy spun on her and punched her in the teeth, sending her crashing to the floor. Feeling my bladder go, panic clawing at my throat, I watched as Tommy pulled my father's bloody head from the wall. Sputtering days, my father tried to release himself from Tommy's iron grip, but it did no good. Tommy's eyes were dark and his mouth clamped in a snarl. Tommy clamped a hand over my father's throat and dragged him into the living room. Without stopping, he threw him through the window and out into the front yard. A mess of tears and terror, snot bubbling from the nose, as Tommy turned back to my mother and I. Now, Tommy was smiling. He went to my stunned mother and hauled her up. You're going to need this, he said darkly, his lips curled in a grin. He looked at me and jerked his head towards the door. Come on, Spence, you do. He pulled my mother to the front door and pushed her outside. I had not moved, my face frozen in a silent scream. Tommy looked over his shoulder and winked at me. Don't make me ask again, sport. Oh, and bring that broom behind you, would you? Pulled off my chair by fear, I got up and dutifully grabbed the kitchen broom and walked to Tommy, my pants reeking of urine. Tommy put a hand on my shoulder and guided me outside to stand by our mailbox. I saw my father rolling in the grass, a mess of blood and grass, green stains everywhere, teeth strewn all over the place. My mother kneeling before him, weeping. Our neighbors were coming out of their houses, eyes wide, shocked looks of horror on their faces as they saw Tommy Daffy. Gather round, he yelled, motioning for them to come closer. Look at what you've done. I saw Megan at her doorstep across the street, face pale as a sheet of snow. She looked at me and I saw her begin to cry, burying her face in her hands. Shocked into obedience, our neighbors came and stood around our tiny front yard by the street. All eyes on my mother and father. This is your fault, Tommy said, meeting every one of their terrified faces. He suddenly snatched the broom from my hands, and one quick motion he snapped that off, tossed the duster aside, and advanced on my father, gripping the splintered pole. My mother screamed and covered her bleeding husband with her body, but Tommy booted her in the face, wrenching my heart. Up you go, Tommy growled, pulling my father up by the hair on his knees. Glass jutting from his face, my father looked up at Tommy, and burning in his eyes. Don't worry, I'll take good care of your son, Tommy whispered. He raised the broken broom over his head like a spear and slammed it into my father's mouth, down his throat, until it erupted from his stomach. Plunged into the earth, blood shot like a geyser out of my father and splattered Tommy's perfect features. My mother howled, her bloodshot 
arms wrapping around the broom handle jutting from his mouth. The neighbors watching were paralyzed, a few of the women crying out at the sudden display of brutal violence. The men's faces had fallen pale and shocked into silence. Pagan's father leaning over and emptying his stomach under the road. Blood dripping from his face, Tommy turned to face them, eyes alight. I want you to think about this moment the next time you want to have a bonfire. Do I make myself crystal, crystal clear? All eyes were drained to the impaled figure of my father bent to the earth. I said, do I make Myself clear, Tommy repeated. The smile dropping from his face. Everyone slowly nodded, every eye wet with tears and wide with horror. Tommy threw a thumb over his shoulder. Now get rid of him. I need to put his son to bed. I took a step back, tears flowing freely now from my eyes, shaken to the core, unable to stop staring at my dead father. My world swam and rocked, my vision a streaking blur of color. I felt like I was going to throw up, pass out, scream until I couldn't breathe anymore. Tommy was soon looming over me. Sweeping me up in his arms, he pressed my shocked face into his shoulder and stroked my hair. As we went into the house and up to my bedroom, I heard a rumble in Tommy's chest. Listening closely to our captor explain how to be good people. 
comfort me. 